Hi everyone. Today I am going to explain how I redesigned this complicated screen to this simplified looking one. And also from this complicated one to this simple looking one. I will explain and talk about the psychology behind the design, decision and also the thoughts I have applied. So before I redesigned the new screens, I had to audit the current screen, okay? To audit the current screen, I followed these principles by Jacob. These 10 principles are really popular and very important. So what I found that the screens, the current one, is missing the aesthetic feeling, minimalistic design, and user control, freedom, consistency, and flexibility, efficiency. I found that all error here. Like, if you see this one, in this one, like, a lot of colors going on, right? A lot of things to see. So it doesn't look minimal, right? It, it doesn't look aesthetic, right? It's a lot of things for you to see. And like if you click here, then it, it makes the card so bigger like this. So bigger. And then now, how you na navigate to the next, next project? You need to scroll, right? Or you need to close it here. It's hard. And yeah, it doesn't really look simple, right? It looks a lot of things going on. So let's let's see how I did it to redesign the screens I had to find some feedback from the real user and I found this from their online presence someone said man good luck with the navigation so he said like I have high PC skills so far but it, it was hard and here it says it wasn't always easy to use it and here it says it took me a week before I could use it so these are like good feedback to take okay and also I think they are not enough so what you can do really to redesign a screen a product uh, if you don't have access to the end user who is really actually using the product if you don't have access to them to talk to them what we can do so the better way in this case is to talk to the sales team to the customer support team because sales and support team they talk a lot with the customers right with the users how to use it or they explain the product to them so for my case what I did uh, this product this is called Projol so Projol they did a lot of demo video to explain the product and this is where I take this skin in a way. So they explain how the design works, how the elements work, everything. So I I did watch a lot of videos to understand the basics of the product, the customer and everything. And then from this knowledge and also these are UX principles, design principles and feedbacks and also some, you know, psychological things. I had to also keep in mind before redesign that I should not make any big changes to global things to standard things because people are always used to experience things from their past experience like in Jacob's law it says that users spend most of their time on other sites and they prefer your site to work the same way as all other sites they already know it's the same thing, right? Let's say, for example, if you open a book in like that way, or if you like open a iPad like that way today, tomorrow you will use the same way, right? If you found a big phone, maybe with a cover like this, you will try to open the same way, right? So we do things from our past experience, right? So as you can see here, their menu are in the same things, not the same place, but almost similar place and then search same same places for the card same places so it's good right and let's talk a little bit about this one I found this online 
human behavior okay so we should not really uh, make it very like colorful or give a lot of colors to button to make people click because because they will find it so let's see here uh, how it works for us as a human like if i feel hungry then i had to like find a restaurant right i had to or earn money or or at least i need money so first i i am hungry then i need to do, do something to eat something right need behavior and then goal or achievements right so let's see how this work really so this is figma this is actually our interface uh, so in our team uh, like for our case we share our projects to our clients a lot of clients a lot of developers so things like this um, if we share our projects to 100 people figma will charge us a lot in the, the end of the month right so what i need to do i had to always like check before the end of month that i reduce the users so figma doesn't charge me a lot so let's say basically uh, i'm here and i was searching oh uh how to reduce the bill i need to reduce the number of editors and then i had to find it it says one in a way and then i had to find where is the option i then i discovered there okay so like this so i click on this then i found oh, okay go to admin view view settings then in here i found that oh, okay there i can reduce the number of users the editors so uh, i don't know why they did not do it like this way settings and go to admin view rename like very easily i don't know maybe they want to charge charge us that that's why they made it hard and they put it there okay but maybe they could make it make it easy but i don't know why figma did it i cannot complain but you know but still the thing is that needs right it needs behavior or action and goals i had a need to reduce my charge and then i had to find it and i got it right and let's see again this one apple notes so if you are apple user you know this this is the note app and when you are in this this space and then where is the like create a new new note it's not like a primary button with red button with a big button it's not like this it's very simple right it's here maybe they gave a priority like with the spacing so it's easy to find but still it's all our same color right but you as a user you found it right and that same thing let's see what like one like customers we as a customer as a user as a people we experience things from our past experience and also that i found uh, in a book that says um 100 things you need to know about people the book name i found that uh, it says that we do things the same thing we do things from our past experience people learn from their past experience so same thing here we do things from first right and also when we have need when we have need we actually find the way to do it right same thing same thing here happened i had to find it i got it like here for the first day maybe it was hard for me to find what is the create note but for the next day next day it was easy right because i have already passed experience yeah let's see this one is called a theo a theo how how do you name it so you see here uh, like basically we found uh the more icon here right the more icon here so you can think like this this more icon it's really very tiny right very small and the color is gray but still like we basically tend to do that uh we find options we find settings uh, with the relevant group right so this is a group of elements right this area is a group of content for this one right so we, what we do basically we okay if i need to find uh, more options i will just find it in the similar pay, uh, places or like this and i found it right but it's not so many like it's not too dark color it's not too bold but still i i found it right i can see it because it's common right it's common to see a more icon beside the content it's okay okay so let's move forward and then see what we did here 
So here uh, you can see that I, first I made the cut bigger, bigger, and showing all the important data here. But I found that oh, this 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 card is really bigger. I I, I cannot f I cannot see more cards easily to take the decision of choosing the card or projects. Anyway, so then I did it like this way. In this one, you can see that it's clean, okay. But I uh, like put a expand icon here so you can expand the card. Let's see. And then when you click on this actually expand the card so what happens here you like you have to you have to scroll a lot to go down and then now what you do to go to the next card scrolling and if these items are a lot a lot of items then you need to actually scroll more more to go to the next card and if you again open the next card and it's going to be a lot of scrolling, right? To scroll, scroll, scroll. So you scroll a lot to find the next card. So how we can solve it that people can see the expanded view, but still they can navigate to the other card easily. Let's see here. Okay, I'll go to this point again. Let's see here. What I did here, I thought, okay, it's a details view, but let's make people less scroll. So I thought, okay, let's make the spacing very tight so people can easily scroll the page and then navigate to the other one. Then what I found that this task, they're not limited to two cards or one card. It can be like 10 cards or at least five cards. So if it's five cards, you, again, you need to scroll, right? So reducing this small spacing doesn't help because if the items are a lot here, you need to scroll right a lot then i thought okay i will not make it tighter i will give better spacing and i did like i did very good spacing here so it's a breathing room very easy to read this data one by one one by one right because uh, once you are in this page that means you are with intention to read the data right okay so what is good here okay what is good here what i did that uh Instead of having the expand icons here, what I did, I made it like you click on the card, you click on the card and then it opens like this from the sidebar. And then you can make it more bigger if you want to really make it bigger. You can collapse it again and it says, okay, it's clicked here. And then now you actually see all the data. You can see very good spacing here. I did because it it, it really helps, right? Because the items, if the items are bigger, then you need to scroll a lot. So let's keep it better spacing, it's easy. And then you can switch between projects easily, here and there, here and there, right? And let's see the old one again, here. If, uh, so you are the admin, right? You are the admin of this screen and you need to, your task is manage the task, right and get the information who is working and add new tasks like this and also see the timeline you care about the timeline is there anything new anything happening so this is a lot to see right you like come from this and scroll down to this then down to this a lot of like scrolling and then scanning to read the data but i made it easy here like this it's all in one view. You can see everything, like the progress, the number of tasks finished, the main hours, uh, how many workers, and also the timeline is sold, start, completed. By, okay, You can see the overview here. And you can scroll right to left like this. So let's see a few more things, few more things here what we did and what is here like this s if you see this s s means a salesperson right s s means sales p mean project manager and w mean workers so but i know that this rs it doesn't help right the rs the adl it, do, it doesn't help who is the person who is l i need to click right i need to click and see so i was thinking mm, that's extra right that's that it takes me 
click to see the name and also i understand the the thing that we people we uh, if first time we use it then next day we know it so maybe s means sales i understand p means project manager i understand but i don't know what is rs mean in that format there can be many names right so that this is one issue that it's, it, it, it doesn't show me the name without clicking it doesn't show me the image without clicking and yeah so what we did here what i did i so for the first time here you you, you just see the high level informations timeline task add new task and if you really want to see more data you click on the card and then the card appears like this and in this one click you see the customer name the projects category the door lock okay and then wh when it was approved sales person project manager with the name and also you can click on this and then call the person or copy the number to paste somewhere else yep and if you wanted to know what is this these are actually navigation i found that now um, notion and also big big giant product they are applying approaching to this one so you can create a new tab and then you can switch to other one and you can go back to the one right so if we go back to the principle the design principle that was by jacob here that 10 usability heuristics for user interface design and we found that the old one was not aesthetic minimalistic and it was not flexible it was not efficient and you know user control and freedom there are some error because you can already see that right and as a ux designer we should have the knowledge the basic understanding the basic principle to audit a design so I did the same thing I applied my knowledge and also from user feedback then we designed it in a way that makes it simple makes it easy and as you can see there in this one what I did for the font and color in the entire design I like for this one this one this one this one this one all are the same font size just two colors like content for this content one color for this content the same color but for this content i used another color so in the entire design only two colors main title color and one is support color so actually you need to avoid the lot of using a lot of colors use less colors and make it simple for the people okay uh, but two things here i used less colors on on content and also less font size like this is one size you can see it's bigger and this is another size for the title but for this thing for this thing all fonts are same size okay that's all all uh, thoughts i could share and i did and thanks a lot for all the time it's a lot of time you have been watching the video so it's time to tell who is me this is Masum. I've been designing for eight years and I've been taking many UX course and psychology course in different platform. And what I like for many is NNG and this, the wheel of persecution. Okay. Maybe you can take a look. Thanks a lot for your time. Bye.